This is the Awkward GM Corbin. It's crunch time on explaining the combat of Chronicles of Darkness. Today's sponsor is Warlock Sanctum Games. They are professional game masters, and if you'd like to hire them, you can find their link in the description. Please check out their Mage the Awakening and Vampire the Requiem games. The Vampire game in particular takes place during a kindred religious war on the bayou. Combat is complicated, so I'm posting timestamps below to cover the following areas if you want to skip around. Basics covers how many actions you get in a turn, rolling for initiative, and what happens when you surprise an opponent. Intent covers declaring what you want the outcome of a combat to be, and what happens when things go too far. Down and Dirty Combat is how to simplify trivial combats to a single die roll. Detailed combat goes into your standard combat rules. Grappling rules are entire an entire section onto themselves. <laughs> then I go into special actions for unarmed and ranged combat, how weapons, armor, and damage are done. And for my next set of videos, I'll cover what rules tend to be overlooked and how to be better at fighting. If you want to know more about Chronicles of Darkness's dice mechanics, please click the thingy in the top right corner to check my previous video on the subject. Going forward, I'm assuming you've at least seen that video. On to the basics. In combat, every character gets two actions a turn. One instant action and one to move your speed stat in yards. You can use an instant action to move twice in a turn if you want. Rolling initiative in Chronicles of Darkness is different from your standard roll a bunch of 10-sided dice and count how many are 8 or better. Instead, you roll one die and add your initiative modifier to it, just like in D&D. This determines the order of who gets to act. Starting with the highest result, they get to do their action and then the next lowest person until you get to the last person in the list. Wherein the round ends and we start back at the top. If you are ambushing a group of characters, or were ambushed, the ambushers need to roll a check to perform the ambush, usually a dexterity plus stealth check, while the ambushees need to roll a perception check, which is wits plus composure, to see if they notice the ambush. If the ambushers have more successes, the ambushees cannot act on the first turn and cannot use their defense stat to penalize incoming attacks. If the ambushes get more successes, they can act on the first turn as normal, and the ambush fails. Note that different ambushes can pass or fail the check to notice the ambush, so it doesn't remove the ambush entirely if only one person succeeds. Intent is an important part of understanding what your players are trying to accomplish. A couple of good questions to ask them are what are they doing and what are the results they are expecting? Violent intent is what we are referring to in combat. A character might want to mug a guard for a key card, but leave them unconscious instead of killing them. If the character kills the guard, they inadvertently killed someone and lose one point of willpower because of it. This is in addition to any breaking points the character might have to make for killing someone. Down and Dirty Combat simplifies combat to a single die roll. This helps speed up unnecessary combats, such as knocking out a single prison guard or subduing a non-combatant. Some special abilities, such as in Werewolf the Forsaken, make combat with mortals turn into Down and Dirty Combat because werewolves are just that powerful. This is where intent really matters, because winning combat doesn't always necessitate killing your opponent. You could beat them into submission or just cause them to flee. Now we cover the more in-depth combat rules. Unarmed attacks typically do bashing damage. Melee, ranged, and thrown weapons do lethal. Touching is when you want to tap an opponent to plant a tracker or to target them with a touch spell like in Mage the Awakening. Pulling a blow grants an opponent plus one to their defense, but allows a character to set the maximum amount of damage an attack can do, up to their highest stat in the die pool. Damage is how many successes are rolled on your attack, plus any weapon modifiers. So one success can still do a lot of damage depending on what weapon you use, such as the chainsaw, which has a base bonus of 3 damage, so you do 4 damage in that case. Dodge can be done anytime you are attacked, but it counts as your turn for that round of combat. 
instead of applying a defense penalty to your opponent's attack, you roll a dice pool equal to double your defense and subtract the successes from the attacker's successes. This applies to all attacks that turn, rolling for each one separately. But your defense is still penalized for being attacked multiple times, and is applied before doubling your defense for dodge. Any character can reduce their defense to zero in order to perform the following actions. A charge allows a character to move twice and then take a melee or unarmed attack action. An all-out attack adds two dice to your melee or unarmed attack roll. Aiming grants plus one to range attacks and can be stacked multiple consecutive turns to a maximum of plus three. This cannot be done if you are auto-firing, auto however. These actions can typically be done at no penalty. Dropping prone can help when you are being attacked at range, but grants bonuses to hit you close up. Reloading your weapon is necessary if you track ammo. If you are reloading a weapon that's ammo is individually loaded instead of with a clip or magazine, you lose your defense for that turn. Killing blow is when you attack a helpless opponent. Instead of rolling your dice pool, you count every die in the pool plus any weapon bonus and apply it directly as damage to the opponent, ignoring armor. This is a breaking point for most people as you are attacking a helpless individual. Why in the world do game designers insist on grapple rules being their own system? In Chronicles, grappling starts off normal. You roll an attack roll, but instead of doing damage, you initiate a grapple. Instead of acting on initiative, the grappling individuals are considered a single entity in the initiative order. Their initiative is considered the higher of the people in the grapple. All the people in the grapple then roll their strength plus brawl, and whoever gets the highest gets to perform a grapple action. There are multiple actions you can do in a grapple, the best of which is ending the grapple. You can take control of an opponent's weapon to use on your next turn. You could damage the opponent by bashing them or using a weapon you have control of. You could toss a weapon you have control of. You could drop prone for some reason, I don't know why you would. You can hold the person so that you and both of them lose your defense to incoming attacks. Both of you. You can restrain an opponent which is as good as ending the grapple if you have handcuffs or rope handy because now they're just handcuffed on the ground and the grapple ends. Or you can use your opponent as a human shield, which I believe is also a breaking point. Here's my advice. Don't use the grapple rules. Most of these actions can be done outside of a grapple, so wrestling for an extra turn is kind of pointless and wastes time. So if a special ability says it requires a grapple, maybe hand wave it away and just ignore the grapple. So now that we are done talking about grapple rules, we move on to unarmed actions, such as biting. Oh, oh wait, if you want your humanoid or human character to bite someone, you have to do it during a grapple. But if you're an animal or monster with teeth as a primary weapon, you don't have to worry about that. In fact, it's easier for you. Also, you can disarm an opponent, and guess what? You don't need to grapple to do it, or even have control of their weapons, so why even have the disarm action in the grapple actions? Auto-fire is when a character uses a weapon with the automatic quality, as stated in the rulebook. When you auto-fire, you determine how many bullets you use, which can't go over the weapon's capacity. Though even the small SMG carries at least 30 bullets, so you should be fine. Every auto-fire burst eats up your ammo, but grants you a bonus to hit targets, and at medium and long bursts you can target multiple opponents. Note that every subsequent attack after the first gets a minus one penalty that stacks, so when you hit the fourth werewolf you get a minus three to attack them. Range is listed as three numbers. Anything within the range of the first number is short range, and suffers no penalty to hit. If it's between the first number and the second number, that's medium range at minus one. If it's between the second and third, that's long range at a minus two penalty to hit. Anything beyond that is impossible to hit, as far as game rules are concerned. Concealment is what happens when a target is obscured, but still visible. Maybe the target has a limb sticking out or something. 
In this case, the target applies a penalty to attack rolls to hit them, as if they had defense. Additionally, the target suffers a penalty to attack from concealment equal to one lower than their benefit. So a minus two in concealment becomes a minus one to shoot from concealment. Cover is when a target is completely hidden. In this case, an attacker must have a weapon with a weapon modifier greater than the cover's durability, or else the weapon doesn't penetrate. If the weapon's bonus is greater, subtract the cover's durability from the attacker's damage, and apply the damage to the cover's structure and to the target hiding behind the cover. If you decide to shoot blindly from cover, you can create an area where anyone in it suffers damage equal to your attack roll, unless they move out of the area or run to their own cover. Weapons have the following qualities. Type is a generalized name of the weapon. Most weapons are lumped into these categories to streamline options. I've seen a game with dozens of pages of every variation of a firearm out there. It's called Spycraft, and check it out if you want. And I think I prefer what Chronicles of Darkness does here instead of that. Damage is the extra damage you do on a successful hit. Ranges are the effective short, medium, and long ranges of a weapon. Initiative is the penalty applied to your initiative rolls while using the weapon. Strength is the minimum amount of strength dots needed to use the weapon without a penalty. I usually ignore this requirement as I feel it's like an arbitrary restriction for no reason. Availability is how many resources or social merit dots you need to acquire the weapon. NA means that it's an easily acquired weapon. All armor has two characteristics, your ballistics and your general armor scores. Ballistics armor only applies to lethal firearms and downgrades it from lethal to bashing. General armor removes the most severe damage caused, so if you have general armor of 4 and you're hit with 2 lethal and 3 bashing damage, it would remove the 2 lethal and 2 bashing damage as those are the 4 most severe damage types, leaving you with only 1 bashing left. The order of applying the armor is first ballistics, then general. The minimum amount of damage a lethal attack can do is one bashing even after applying armor. Armor piercing rounds or weapons subtract from the armor type being used, so an armor piercing rapier ignores the ballistic armor completely because it's a melee weapon, while an armor piercing round is applied to ballistic armor first and then general. Instead of tracking health points, Chronicles uses health boxes. Damage is broken down into three different severities, bashing, lethal, and aggravated. When you take damage, you apply it to the leftmost boxes, keeping them in order from most severe to least. So in this example I posted, the character has one aggravated damage, one lethal, and two bashing. Since the two bashing are the least severe, they are stacked on top of the lethal and aggravated damage. If all the health boxes are completely full of non-aggravated damage, the least severe damage type would be upgraded to the next level. For instance, if I had 7 bashing and took an additional 2 points of bashing, I would upgrade my farthest left 2 bashing into lethal damage. If you take damage in any of your 3 rightmost health boxes, you suffer a penalty to every roll equal to that penalty, except for determining consciousness. If your rightmost health box is filled with bashing or lethal damage, every turn you must roll stamina to see if you remain conscious. If your rightmost box is filled with lethal, you start to bleed out, which upgrades one lethal to aggravated every minute. If your last most box is full of aggravated, the character is just dead. Has this helped you understand combat more? Feel free to throw a couple bucks my way through my Kofi account via PayPal if it has, link in the description below. Like and subscribe if you found this video useful, and please leave a comment below if you have any suggestions for future videos. There's supposedly a bell icon, but I've never seen it myself. You might want to click that if you find it. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, have a good one. And now for the freeformed outro. Honestly, I really hate grapple rules, and if this video gets the most likes of any video currently on my channel, I will 
do a video on grapple rules and why I hate them so much. And uh, I think that is currently the most likes I have for a video is currently about 25, 30. So if it gets higher to that, let's say 40, I'll do a video. Sound good? Sound good. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one.